Now, thousands of summer holiday plans have been thrown into chaos after the government announced Portugal would be taken off the UK's green list from Tuesday. Yeah. So, the decision comes just two weeks after quarantine-free travel was permitted to the country, so it's been described as a huge blow to the already struggling tourism industry. We're, we're discussing the news with uh, travel expert Simon Calder and owner of Hayes Travel, Dame Irene Hayes. Good yeah. morning to Good both morning. of you. Also speaking to Miguel Campina, who owns Maria's uh, Restaurant and Beach Bar in the Algarve. Good morning to you all. Simon, we'll, we'll kick off with you. So, as a travel expert, what do you make of, of the government's decision on Portugal? Uh, it is absolutely extraordinary. It's as though the government hasn't just moved the goalposts on what we understood to be the case about uh, getting plenty of warning if a country was going to be moved from the green list to the amber list. They've uprooted the entire goalposts, moved them to an entirely different uh, arena and rewritten the rules so nobody knows what is going on. Of course, there's a global pandemic on, which is why it's so incredibly difficult to travel abroad. I'm speaking to you from beautiful Gibraltar Airport. Um, it's the last country standing, Dermot. It really is. Um, nowhere else in southern Europe can I go to without having to quarantine when I come back. And it's not just a question of me waltzing onto my plane in half an hour. Um, I've spent half the night filling in loads of forms for people who desperately need... Um, uh, you know, my, my uh, test before departure, pre-book a PCR test once I get to Heathrow, fill in a passenger locator form. That's 100 quid so far. Multiply that by four for a family of four. It's not an easy time to be a traveller. And for the thousands, tens of thousands of people who are waking up in Portugal, suddenly to find that uh, two weeks ago, yep, they were told, off you go, have a lovely time, send us a postcard. Now they're being told... You have got, well, I make it 90 hours and counting to get back to the UK. Otherwise, you are going to be, unfortunately, having to self-isolate for uh, 10 days. This is it, Simon. I, the, the thing I saw, the th thing I thought, rather, when I, when I saw the story last night was I couldn't believe how little notice they're giving people. Yeah, and, and that, that goes completely against everything we were told two months ago um, by the Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps. He said... Oh, you remember last year when suddenly we were announcing quarantine at a moment's notice? Well, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to um, make sure that you uh, have plenty of warning. We've got this green watch list. So we'll say, yeah, Portugal's looking a bit iffy. So, you know, in a week or two, it may go onto the amber list. Oh, no, that went completely out the window yesterday. It was um, 4 a.m. Thursday, uh, Tuesday morning, um, or, or you're off. And I've spoken to some of the big uh, tour operators, um, TUI, the biggest holiday company. They are already working out how they can send bigger planes into Portugal this weekend to bring back all the people who desperately, sadly, after waiting over a year for an escape, are having to come home early. So what about if you have booked a holiday for Portugal? What are your rights? Are you insured? What, what are our legal... What can we... I don't... Have we got a leg to stand on? Yeah. Where do we stand? Well, exactly. You know, what's going on? Um, let me tell you exactly what's happening. The government, the Department for Transport, says, do not go to Portugal, it's too dangerous. The Foreign Office, part of the government, says, go to Portugal, it's lovely. They don't actually say that, but they certainly don't warn against travel there. So the big holiday companies are perfectly happily selling holidays to Portugal. They will be running them after Portugal goes onto the green list, even though part of the government says, please don't go, on to, go to anywhere on the amber list. Forgive me, I think I said green list. I meant Portugal's going on the amber list. So therefore, you can postpone your holiday, but you are not going to get a full refund. Um, and the same goes for scheduled flights. You know, if you book something with EasyJet, Jet2, uh, British Airways, Ryanair uh, to Portugal. Well, assuming the flight still goes ahead, they will let you switch to a different date, uh, very often let you switch destination. But again, you're not getting your money back. And the sort of good news is that if you decide to travel to Portugal, your travel insurance will be valid because the Foreign Office says it's OK to go there. Um, I hope you're paying attention, Alison. There's going to be a test at the end of this. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Simon... all over it. It, it appears to, to be that, like, I think a lot of people, like, I think you said it, Portugal seemed effectively the only game in town, but I think we were all... A, a lot of people that wanted European travel thought, well, if, we'll see how Portugal goes, and then I'm sure they'll open up to other countries. So it always feels like, with the uncertainty, people are going to see this now and go, well, what's the point of going away at all? Which obviously has terrible implications for the travel industry this summer. 
Oh, absolutely. And that, that's it. I mean, as Dame Irene will uh, no doubt confirm, this is desperate for the travel industry and for holidaymakers in the short term. But it's even worse in the longer term because, frankly, who's going to book a holiday if the government is suddenly going to change the rules and back to this terrible holiday quarantine? Quarantine bingo scramble that we um, endured all through last summer when yeah they suddenly opened everything up on the 10th of July and then uh, two weeks later oh Spain no um, you've got to get back by midnight otherwise um, you're going to be quarantining nobody can plan their lives nobody can plan that much needed escape nobody can plan a travel industry on the basis of um, everything changing every week or two it's the hokey cokey of the travel industry. You're think, in one week, you're out the next. I think, Simon, we just need transparency of the data, don't we? That's all we want, transparency. We don't want to, we don't want to know if the summer's off or if, or if it's on hold. That's all we want to know. Exactly right. And if we could look at all the numbers, and me and lots of other sort of geeky people do pour through all the numbers. Let's have a look at the coronavirus rates and the trends and the vaccine rollout and everything, because we thought that was what the government was looking at. But now they're looking at something else entirely and saying, oh, yeah, um, if, uh, by the way, it's a choice between opening up uh, England, certainly on the 21st of June, or having your holiday abroad. It's um, an extraordinary um, uh, new choice, which we didn't realise um, was pertaining. And I'll tell you what, in a minute, I think the British Airways flights are arriving. So um, I may stand by. I may uh, be able to give you a, a shot of it landing at this very exciting airport, which has two ends, both going into the Mediterranean Sea and the rock behind it. Um, I'll let you know. Well, well, well let us know. We're going to move on to Dame Irene now. Um, Irene, you must be absolutely devastated with, with this announcement. How are you feeling? Yeah, well, first of all, obviously, we were really shocked. It was a real surprise because um, in the uh, holiday destinations in Portugal, the infection rates are really low. So the majority of holiday makers go to the Algarve. Um, so we were very shocked when we heard the news. But as usual, the lovely staff at Hayes Travel um, worked very late last night and we outbound call all of our customers who are in Portugal or just about to go to Portugal and told them what the um, arrangements were. And um, as Simon says, the vast majority have decided to amend their holidays. And, and they're, they're doing that probably autumn this year or spring um, next year in some circumstances. But it, it was a real shock. We were expecting to see more destinations on the, the green list. And today, the staff are now working their way through people who were due to go to Sri Lanka and Egypt, and they have moved from the amber destination list to the red destination list. So we're all working today through um, to, to speak to those customers and make sure that we're giving them the yeah. same option. Just to, to clarify there, Demo, uh, Egypt, Sri Lanka, Costa Rica, Bahrain, Sudan, Trinidad and Tobago and Afghanistan uh, yeah. are being put on the red list. From a business person's point of view, what kind of provision... Like, are you thinking about this all the time as to, as to what you can do with your business to mitigate this? Oh, absolutely, all the time. And, um, again, you know, the staff have been terrific in that they're incredibly flexible and that you know that we took on lots of staff when we acquired Thomas Cook in October of 2019. And they're tremendous. So we're obviously trying to take advantage of uh, flexi furlough um, but we need people in our shops to look after our customers. And although Simon says it's a confused picture, we still have lots of people booking holidays. Um, I mean, obviously, the uh, cruisers going around the UK are hugely popular and have been really important for the travel industry. Um, but also, we have people, we did a big cruise launch in April, lots of people going on international cruises and booking those. And the surprising thing is that um, people are spending more money, they're booking more than one holiday. So we had a couple who came into one of our shops on Wednesday to book one cruise and went out with two. And they're tending to go to more long haul bucket list destinations. Um, as I say, the majority of for autumn and winter of 2021 or into 2022 and um, for, the, for the latest cruise launch into 2023. So people still want to travel. I think there's a lot of uncertainty with the traffic light system and sometimes 
contradiction between the Foreign and Commonwealth Office advice, which we've for 41 years, we've used the FCO advice as the gold standard. So it, it really, so many terms and conditions in travel rely on what the Foreign and Commonwealth Office says, and that is still the case. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to look carefully at that, really look carefully at insurance policies, but there's still some, some um, great holidays to be booked out there. Well, thanks, thanks, Irene. Irene. Uh, let's move on to someone now who's obviously just, just has a, a massive impact, like right here, right now. Yeah. On the cold face, Miguel Campina. Miguel, thanks for joining us. You're the owner of Maria's uh, Bar and Restaurant. Both me and Alison are uh, very happy to hear that because they're both our mother's names uh, in the Algarve. Listen, we're so sorry about this. You're, you, you know, it must. This must have a dev devastating impact on on your livelihood straight away. Well, guys, um, first of all, good morning, everyone. I want to thank all the British people that visit the Algarve in the last two, three weeks. It was absolutely magnificent, the love that they showed to the Algarve and Portugal. We're very thankful as a country and as our people. We're very thankful to everyone. Um, I'm going to leave to Simon before he said it right. I'm going to leave the internal British affairs problem uh, apart. Uh, and Simon said it really well. He described really well what is the issue. And, um, and obviously, all I want to say is that the impact is, is big, is disheartening, is disappointment, but uh, we, we have to move on. And uh, there's one thing I'm going to assure you guys, is that the British people will still come, they will still travel to Portugal and to the Algarve uh, with the conviction that they come into a safe country with the lowest rate in Europe and in the world, we have the vaccination program already done to 40-year-olds. Um, so it's moving on. We have our contagious rating very low and everything is so under control. Everything is so well organized. Uh, our government have legislated two weeks ago on a weekend to welcome all the British uh, population to visit the Algarve. They worked over Saturday and Sunday over European Union law. And they opened, and we were opened with our arms in the airports and all the restaurants and bars in the hotels. We tried to do our very best to welcome everyone, apart from windy nights and cold nights. But we were here for you guys. Well, Miguel, we're going to have to finish it there, but I'm going to leave the final question with Simon. Very quickly, Simon, what does this mean for the industry in travel? Well, it's an absolutely desperate time. They've spent 15 months basically handing back money to people. Um, and there will be an awful lot of people who just saw the news yesterday and just desperately worried about their livelihoods. But there's also one really important group of people I think we have to mention. It's nothing to do with holidays. These are people who haven't seen their loved ones for over a year. They are desperate to get to see them. They thought we would see a bit more unlocking yesterday and they'd be closer to uh, giving them a hug, but absolutely not. And my heart absolutely goes out to them. Thanks, Simon. Thank you to you, Simon. I think they're playing your tune, Simon. That was, that was uh, Mr Cald at the gate too. Uh, thank you, Irene. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you.